Hello friends, my name is Bella and I am so excited that you're tuning into our conversation today. On our call we have Araya who will be interpreting for us um, and Andrea will you take a moment to introduce yourself. Hi there, yes my name is Andrea. My name sign is Andrea like this and I'm so thankful that I can be a part of this. I'm excited to be here. Yay! Um, we're so excited that you're here. We're so thankful for um, getting to jump on this call, dive into some questions. Um, we, we have had Andrea already, her story is posted on the hub um, and you may have seen it already. Uh, and so now we get to take, a, we have a chance to ask a couple more questions um, and about her story. So Andrea, in your story, you say that you weren't a believer with your first four children. So I would love to know when and where did you come to know Christ? Yes. Okay. So when and where? Uh, when was in 2016. It's uh, had a complicated work situation where I was struggling uh, with childcare and it was really a challenge and working wasn't going well. My job wasn't going well. And I was praying. I was like, what do I do? And I didn't really believe in God. Even at the time, I was just trying to uh, jump into faith, I guess, and just see what he would show me when I prayed to him. And um, if he showed me things then I would know he was real. And he did. And I decided to accept Jesus into my life and everything changed. Oh, so good. Um, what would you say the biggest piece of God's character is that you hold on to? Mm, the thing I cherish most about who he is, is his love. Uh, I was raised, um, uh, you know, just as far as not knowing really what love would look like and relational boundaries and what that would look like. Uh, now my family is much better. God has really helped me through, through that. And I've grown a lot in his love and what he's shown me in his love. Mm, so good. So good. Uh, you talk about vulnerability in your testimony and how that really helped you feel the positivity and the strength of your community. Are there other ways that you've seen vulnerability in your life and how has that impacted you? I think vulnerability is so important you know, to know your story can impact others, that they may relate to you and um, there can be mutual support as a result of that. And it's important to have a person who may be a mentor or a spiritual friend or um, somebody that you can do life with that um, can help you through things and you can be vulnerable with them. Hmm. Um, you say you've loved sharing Jesus and his story. Who are those, some of those people um, that you've tried to engage with and share your story too and his love. Yeah, I really enjoy sharing my story. Uh, there's there's one person in particular that uh, who was quite a, quite an experience. Uh, after I got saved, it was maybe uh, gosh a few months later maybe, and there was a person who knew me before. Um, you know, and I, and I wasn't really a good person before I was saved. And this individual um, came up to me and was, was really unsure, not trusting, uh, you know, whether or not I would be different. And uh, she's seen me through this journey of change. And this one friend, um, I, I had to say, just give me a chance, just watch my life and see how it's different. And I realized like, uh, with God's help that I'm like a walking Bible, a testimony to her, to show her. Um, and she's did start to see these significant changes in my life that the old Andrea, like I was before is no longer who I am anymore. And she started to trust me in new ways and believe in me now. And, um, that's just been a powerful testimony for sure that she saw that. Mm, so good. So rich. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, five kids, I'm sure your life is busy and chaotic. Um, and now having baby number five, um, how has this baby shown you God's character? Uh, 
Wow, God's used uh, baby number five to show me his love, uh, his joy, uh, so much joy. And God's been teaching me about communication um, in, the, in the process of naming our baby, you know, all, all of our children, like my husband and I together, you know, pick the baby's name and, um, and with the kids in school, we've had to figure out how to communicate and who's going to take the kids to school and who's going to do this and who's going to change the diaper. So it's required a lot of patience and communication. Oh yeah. I bet. I bet. Um, I have to imagine this COVID situation of mass and lockdown has brought a lot of hardship. Um, so what is what has brought you hope and encouragement and made you able to persevere through this hard season? I've noticed um, on the positive side, I've gotten a lot of time with God. You know, even though there's been plenty of challenges and struggle, I've been able to find some time with God and experience his joy being in his presence, uh, having conversations with friends. Um, and even though, you know, we're not together, it's important to have friends that you can pray together with and that will help us through, help me through this. Mm -hmm. Do you have any pieces of encouragement for the deaf community? I do. Yeah. I want to share, um, with the deaf community that, uh, if you, or if you have a family member who's deaf, uh, to be patient, you know, the deaf community has already, uh, experienced like double oppression with coronavirus and lockdown. Um, there is just already a lack of communication, lack of attention being raised. Uh, and now in quarantine, it is like uh, exponentially more like leading to frustrations and depression and so on. So just be patient um, and check in with each other and engage with each other, interact. And um, the other thing, just to be vulnerable about my story is uh, knowing as you have your own vulnerability to share that you may be impactful to others, other in the deaf community. You know, they say 98% of deaf people don't claim to know Jesus. And so share your story. That story uh, can reach others that are out there. I mean, he's changed me and God can change you and with his love and um, just your desire for his love specifically uh, be vulnerable and share with others. Wow. I had no idea the, the percentage was so high of people who didn't know Jesus in the deaf community. Yes. Yeah. Are there resources that, um, that you found that help you um, for like, as someone in the deaf community? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're really blessed to have an amazing resource available in America here. Um, in other countries, um, there's a severe lack of language and access um, and lack of advocacy for the deaf community. So there's one just fabulous organization called Deaf Missions. Hmm. And Deaf Missions are uh, specifically working on reaching out to missionaries and going to other countries to teach them and find um, other Christians in the Deaf community and reach out to those who aren't believers and to teach and train them to develop their own translation teams in the heart, langu heart sign languages of these different countries, um, because many of, of the deaf people don't read um, in the written language. Um, it's a visual language. So they'll depend more on gestures and um, sign languages. So coming up with visual sign that they can then understand God's word. Mm, so good. I yeah, it seems like a lot of work to do that we have left to do. Um, it is. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Let's talk about community. Um, you told me, we were talking before um, about just the importance of community for deaf community and also for hearing people. I know that community is so important. Um, do you have any, um, anything you'd like to share about that? Any pieces of advice for community? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for both communities, just to love each other. 
you know, we've already gone through a lot of um, uh, hate crimes that we've seen. And uh, even, you know, just today, there's, you know, people just being so against each other and love each other because you never know uh, what someone else's story is, what they've been through, what their struggle is. You just don't know. And so to show kindness, to show love, to reflect God and his character um, so that others can see him. That's so good. Um... You say in your testimony that the Lord said he's not done writing your story. So in your life right now, what is God teaching you? Hmm. Uh, what has God been teaching me and what does he want to do with the rest of my story? I think just to stay, uh, stay in the faith you know, to stay with people who are supporting me, uh, you know, like at church and um, wanting to know his, his scripture more and to be prayerful and um, seek out support of those people that would lead, point me towards him and remembering that he's with us, you know, and I've got this new baby here that, um, you know, we're going to have our, our baby uh, dedication uh, this coming Sunday. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, so good. Yeah. Mother's Day coming up. Happy Mother's Day. So exciting with baby number five and to celebrate that. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with us today? Hmm. I think just, just encouraging you to trust God. He has got the best plan for us, even when we don't understand it and allowing Holy Spirit to guide you, uh, that everything, you know, maybe looks like it's not going well, but to let things fall apart, uh, because there comes to a point where we know we can experience God's help. Hmm. That's good. Um, Andrea, thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. It's been a joy to hear more about your story. Yes, thank you, Bella. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Araya, for interpreting. I appreciate it. Yeah, me as well. Thank you, Araya. Um, we love that you're a part of our community, and we are excited to continue to help um, bless the deaf community with the stories of God's goodness and strength. Um, so, Salt, with that, it's been a blessing to be involved in this month of moments, hearing all about the Lord's faithfulness, and we're excited for all the moments to come. Bye, friends. Bye everyone. Love you.